Whether it's the towering hotels of Las Vegas, the glittering bars of downtown Macau, or the stunning infinity pools of Singapore's Marina Bay Sands, beneath them all, you shall find the lingering shadow of the legendary Sheldon Adelson, the man who completely turned the tables in the global casino industry. You see, every industry has its hero, its idol, its pioneer, or simply put, someone who monumentally altered the game for everyone. And for the casino industry, that person finds no other contender than Sheldon Adelson himself. In this article, we shall uncover his roadmap to success and explore how he transformed the industry more than anyone could ever dream of. Like most rags to riches fables, Adelson's story follows a similar pathway. Born in 1933 to a low-income family, Sheldon underwent a rather simple, if not frugal, childhood. His father, of Ukrainian Jewish ancestry, was a taxi driver, whilst his mother, of Lithuanian Jewish descent, ran a knitting shop. But this did not define the boundaries of Sheldon's future, and at the age of just 12, the industrious little boy forged his first business venture, having borrowed $200 from his uncle. He used this to purchase a license to sell newspapers, which he tirelessly did until he was 16 and was ready for his next big venture. Borrowing a larger sum of $10,000 from his kind uncles again, he built a business around selling candy vending machines. This emerging streak was then disrupted by a short stint in the army, which was followed by a swift return to hustling once he was discharged from the forces. Thereafter, he dabbled in the toiletries trade, the de-icing product market, and even in the burgeoning industry of tour packages. Adelson's dynamic business career eventually granted him millions of dollars, awarding him the shiny title of serial entrepreneur. It didn't take rocket science to sense that a future business tycoon was in the making. After a fruitful decade in the 1960s, Sheldon entered the trade show business, where he built yet another flowering company called the Interface Group Show Division. By the 1990s, its successful record in holding shows like the premier Comdex show for the technology industry made it a leading player in the trade show industry. When Sheldon and his partners sold the business, Sheldon alone enjoyed a windfall of over $500 million. By then, Sheldon was beginning to make his first moves in the gambling industry, having purchased the lavish Sands Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. From that moment onward, Sheldon had planted the seeds for a truly flourishing casino empire. That the emerging skylines of Las Vegas, Macau and Singapore were soon to discover. So, let's cast our lenses back to the audacious Adelson, the 55-year-old businessman who has just recently purchased the Sands Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Somehow, that wasn't enough though. And Adelson felt hungry for a little more. An aging hotel was not where he wanted to seal his business empire. So, during one of his swanky vacations with his wife in Italy, Adelson stumbled across the marvels of Italian architecture. Immediately, he felt inspired to mimic the charms of Italy in his own hotels and casinos. Upon returning to sunny Las Vegas in 1996, Adelson demolished the Sands Hotel and Casino and razed it to the ground. In its place, he opted to place a glorious Venetian-style building and casino complex that drew its inspiration from the palaces and art galleries of Venice. He even went as far as hiring an Italian historian to help maximize its Venetian appearance. And after three long years and over $1.1 billion in construction costs, the Las Vegas Strip finally welcomed the arrival of the grandstanding, ostentatious and mighty Venetian casino. Las Vegas Sands had just received an Italian-style makeover, packed with its own set of gondoliers and a grand canal. Opening its doors in 1999, it featured a whopping 4,049 suites, 18 restaurants, and a bespoke shopping mall. As if it deserved it, the Venetian became one of the world's largest, most celebrated and admired hotel complexes in the world. Down the road in Las Vegas, Adelson had also built the Las Vegas Sands LVS Expo and Convention Center, another cash cow that married the brand of his casino with the industry that he once dominated. 
As Casino Empire continued to sprawl, Adelson and his company LVS decided to build a new casino resort in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Having been awarded a license by the Gaming Control Board in 2006, work promptly began in its construction, with the first table games kicking off in 2010. And, much to his good fortune, the timing couldn't have been better, as the financial crash of 2008 would have easily disrupted the project had the decision not been made earlier. That said, as an American business mogul, Adelson had succeeded in conquering the American casino market. He was the preeminent casino magnate across the country, and his growth was outpacing those of multiple rivals. What's more, Adelson's appetite was far from quenched. Having grabbed a large slice of the American market, he began setting his sights on the Asia-Pacific region. At approximately the same time as his Pennsylvania venture, Adelson's focus began to pivot towards the rising metropolises of Singapore and Macau, two ambitious cities that were salivating for some juicy foreign investment. And they were in luck. A bold and daring business mogul from the US was about to spread his wave of casino-fueled prosperity along the jewels of the Asia-Pacific. So, let's begin with Macau. What's unique about Macau is not merely the history of the once colonized city, but in how it revealed some of Adelson's most risk-prone and audacious gambles. See, Macau was a tough spot to build a world-class casino in. While it had a buoyant gambling industry, it was known for its lawlessness, violence and general sense of disorder. Furthermore, the handover of the territory back to China in 1999 raised questions as to whether it could take off as a reliable business center. It was far from being another glitzy and glamorous Las Vegas, that's for sure. But unlike many rivals in the casino world like Haraz and Caesars, our audacious Adelson was yet again willing to take the gamble. Adelson saw the potential that this little island city held, being at the doorstep of over a billion people in mainland China. Despite all its troubles, it had potential, and if successful, the reward could only be huge. So, in 2001, Adelson submitted a bid, outbid all of his competitors' conservative bids and successfully won the tender to build the first internationally licensed casino. In 2004, Sands Macau opened its doors and soon enough began to emulate the vibrancy of its Las Vegas twin. Then, and rather strangely, Adelson decided to expand his Macau footprint to a literal wasteland in between the islands of Kulain and Taipa, called Koh Tai. There he envisioned a new strip that would eventually become Asia's largest casino and hotel complex. Back then, Koh Tai was the last place anyone would have thought of doing business in. In fact, Adelson's rival, Steve Wynn, called it the stupidest idea he had ever seen. Clearly, not everyone was on board with the Koh Tai proposal. Everyone except Adelson, that is, who pushed forward nevertheless and poured about $14 billion in investments to build it. After a rough patch during the 2008 recession, the construction pulled through and was largely complete by 2010. Today, it boasts over 21,000 rooms, the largest holiday inn branch in the world, thousands of shops and gourmet restaurants, and gigantic conference spaces. As a result of the lofty Kotai Strip, Macau's gambling capacity shot up by 20 times, sealing its position as Asia's premier sin city, or as it's quite aptly known as today, Asia's Las Vegas. Truly, who would have thought that another Las Vegas, complete with a Venetian and an Eiffel Tower mock-up, would spring up in a derelict and decolonized Chinese city? And we are still to mention the spectacular city of Singapore, where yet another footprint of this gambler makes its presence known. Back when Singapore started offering gambling licenses, Adelson and his rivals rushed to place bids. But, owing to Singapore's bureaucrats micromanaging everything, his largest rival, Steve Wynn, got annoyed and gave up. But LVS knew that the sizable potential for reward justified any hurdles along the way. After a rumored cost of $5.5 billion, the Marina Bay Sands of Singapore opened its doors at the turn of the last decade, 2010. Today, the towering structure you see in the photos and travel guides, looking like a little kayak on three legs, is exactly that, the magnificent Marina Bay Sands. Complete with infinity pools, thousands of hotel rooms and upscale stores, it forms another prized landmark of Singapore, 
visited by millions of tourists every year. And yes, he changed the face of the global casino industry, sure, but not without a dose of controversy. Let's take a little look at the other, slightly darker side to his business dealings. Firstly, in 2008, Hong Kong businessman Richard Swen sued Adelson for failing to make payments of $5 million and up to 2% equity of the Macau Sands. This was supposed to be in return for Richard helping Adelson to win the sought-after bid from the Macau government through whatever backdoor means he held. The Las Vegas jury ruled in favor of Richard and awarded him a payout of $43.8 million. However, Adelson had the judgment overturned, inviting further lawsuits of over $500 million against him to cover for the damages accrued. And the story doesn't end there. Adelson also found himself in hot water over charges of bribery, amounting to $328 million, and allegedly breaching the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. In response, Las Vegas Sands Corp agreed to pay $6.96 million as a criminal penalty to close the case. On that note, back to the man himself, the one whom Singapore and Macau can thank for their changed fortunes. Up till 2016, Sheldon Adelson had topped the annual gambling power rankings for eight years and consecutively. As of today, the 86-year-old's net worth stands at about $30 billion, according to Forbes, making him amongst the richest and most successful gambling tycoons in the world. And on the back of his gambling fortune, Adelson has expanded his reach to the worlds of media, politics, and philanthropy. He owns the Las Vegas Journal newspaper, one of the most widely read Trump-supporting newspapers in the city. In Israel, he owns the right-wing Israeli Hayom and Makor Rishon newspapers. Speaking of which, he has been an active supporter of Israel and its founding ideology, Zionism. He has funded Birthright, an organization that sends young Jews from all over the world to Israel to help them reconnect with their history. Similarly, he has donated $25 million to the Yad Vashem Holocaust Remembrance Authority and another $25 million to aid the construction of a high school in Las Vegas. More recently, in fact, he donated millions of face masks to COVID-stricken cities like New York and Las Vegas to help them curb their local outbreaks. Resultantly, he was labeled amongst the most generous and influential Jewish philanthropists by Jewish magazines. And his influence doesn't stop there. His large fortune has enabled him to bankroll American presidential candidates, most notably the current president, Donald Trump. Trump identifies Sheldon as a good friend and has received at least $25 million in campaign funds from his good friend, Adelson. This has earned him the label of Trump's patron-in-chief, making him an instrumental figure in shaping both the politics of his home country and that of the Asia-Pacific region. Indeed, the occupant of the White House wields tremendous power in shaping global affairs, including the affairs of businesses like that of Adelson, the trade across international borders. All in all, in Sheldon Adelson, we see a man who's not only conquered the global casino landscape, but also made his mark in areas like the media, politics, and philanthropy. His resulting material success, influence, and legacy will keep him a formidable figure in the world for many years to come. So, have you ever visited one of the many Las Vegas Sands properties? How was your experience? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing. Thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.